G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. If you missed part one of the spin index, uh, whatever you want to call it, it's a link up there now. You can go watch that first, then come back and watch this one. Uh, if you watched John's video back when he made his, uh, and you're thinking, oh, same shit, different video, stick with me because I do a few things just a bit differently the way he did them, and you may find them a little bit interesting. So let's not mess around with this. Follow me over to the middle, and we'll get started on it. Over there. Alrighty, so while you guys weren't looking this morning, I jumped in and made this up. And it's an absolutely perfect fit in that hole. There's no play or anything in it. I did stuff up, make that thread a bit short so I could recess this afterwards. But anyway, we'll get that in there because this has a 6mm thread in there, so... I'll just get this in there. Come on, there it is. Locked it down in place, so... It should be dead centre of the table. Now I, I firmly believe in, uh, in doing that there's an easy way and a hard way of doing stuff. And I'm a big fan of doing stuff the easy way. So what I've done is, uh, that's that was a piece of 16mm bar. I've just cleaned it up, it's about 15 and a half now. Got 16mm collet in there. Bit of these two bolts nipped up just so the table wouldn't move around while I was locking that down. And then we just wind that down on there, put the collet up onto it. No, I might just come up a little bit, douchebag. Nick the collet up onto it. Ugh, finally, right now, that should be in the dead center of the, of the z axis. So zero out uh, x, zero out y. I'll unlock this again. Move this table over so we can get the lock lever back in the right place. There we go. Now, using John's measurements, I've come out here 68 millimeters in X. Thank God for DROs. Lock that up. It's not going anywhere. Well, I am going to take John's lead on this and just spot the 36 holes and then finish them in the drill press. Right, let's, where does that sit on there? It should be you know, far in from the edge, is it? 7mm. Right, now, so I have a fair bit of faith in, uh, in my 10 degree marks on this table. But I have absolutely no faith in the 1 degree marks. So I've got a little something to show you later on. Deal with uh, the uh, vernier scar, which has to be at 11 degrees. Well that went pretty well except for one of them, about halfway around, uh, I just lucky I noticed, uh, I looked down, I wasn't locking the table up and just as I reached the depth I was sort of going to, thought I saw the table move and I went down and I looked down there and it had, it had moved over just a tad, so I realigned it, locked, started locking the table up from that point onwards, so I think that's come up pretty good. Right, so next, uh, next move will be over to the uh, drill press to drill them out. Alrighty, so uh, just before I head over to the drill press, I thought I'd show you this while I've got some better light over here if I can get this thing to focus properly. Come on. Focus, damn you. Righto. Can you see the weird ass grind on that? It's really weird. Uh, I bought one of these once before, and I've since had to resharpen it, so I lost that weird little point on there. It's called, I think, it's, I think Giant Tech is a tie brand, I'm not 100% certain. Um, but Somewhere, I found it somewhere, once before it said the ultimate self-centering drill and this weird grind on here seems to help them self-center themselves really well so I went and bought a new one yesterday but that's why I'm going to drill that out with Oh, it truly is amazing how much swarf 36 8 millimeter holes mates this thing got that bloody hot halfway through it I had to take it outside and cool it down amazing anyway that's those done let's take them over the bench and chamfer it oh 
Alrighty, so that's that. I do believe that drill drill a little bit oversized because that's an 8mm pin in it. So that fits pretty good, really. No problem. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, I didn't ring them because I felt it was cutting just a live size to start with, and uh, it doesn't really matter because I've got to make pin, so if pin needs to be just a little bit oversized, and so be it. Now, I haven't decided what I'm going to do next, but I'll make up the uh, piece to mount this up on top of this plate with or not. Going to have to have a few beers with uh, some boys I haven't seen for a while this afternoon, so I haven't got much time to do anything else. So I think what we might do is have a little talk about this. What I said I uh, was going to do something just a little bit different to the way John did his. When it comes time to do the, uh, the vernier scale part of it, John uses a bit of CAD, i.e. the old style cardboard aided design, to work out just, uh, you know, to work out a pattern to do his drilling. And I'm not going to try and explain it, so with John's kind permission, here is John explaining how he did it. I'm up to the vernier scale now and this is a little bit tricky but I'll try and describe it the best I can. That's our pivot point, there'll be a hole drilled in here and that's how I'll line up the centre of the mill spindle. Then we measure out our 68mm to match our indexing plate that we've already made with the holes and that's where it'll pivot around that radius there. So I'll put that to the side and then I'll talk about these holes uh, and this took a little bit of working out, and I think I understand it. The holes here in the indexing plate are 10 degrees apart. 36 holes, one complete circle. However, the vernier scale is 11 degrees apart. So basically, you, you have a 0, 11 degrees, 22, 33, 44, etc. all the way through. And that's so that it moves 1 degree increments, and that sort of gives you your vernier scale, if that makes sense. What's important that I see here is that uh, this centre line at the top, which is your marker that you would have indicating whereabouts the hole is. So if it's, uh, you know, the 20 degrees hole and that's at the top on that mark, then that's 20 degrees. But that's important to be right in the middle here of the vernier scale at 49 and a half degrees. So it's 49 and a half degrees uh, this way and 49 and a half degrees up to the number nine here this way. And I've put an extra 11 degrees at the end here back to zero uh, and that just gives me a reference here to line up the holes here so that hole and this hole will line up and also right in the middle here of four and five will line up as well with a hole so if we overlay the plate onto this drawing so i hope that comes out on the camera um, good enough for you guys to see but as you can see at the zero here we're right on the cross as you would expect because that's where you'd line up the first hole and of course when we get past the nine to this zero here and and then of course you can see right between the four and the five at the top here that's exactly where we are there all right thanks for that john saved me trying to do it um because i probably would have just messed it up anyway but anyway my mathematics skills are not the greatest and i didn't want to try and you know sit down and draw it all out and get it absolutely spot on. So I went to see my man up the road with computer type CAD and asked him if he could uh, draw me something in CAD, print it out on a piece of paper with, uh, you know, little crosses everywhere where I had to, you know, drill a hole so I could use it as a template to stick it down with a bit of tape or whatever and, uh, and then, you know, mark it. And he said, well, why don't I just print your plastic one on my 3D printer? And I went, oh, well, that'd be nice of you, thank you very much. And he did, there it is. So uh, this is this is it. Um, these holes were just a little undersized, so I so I just shoved a reamer through those. And uh, I haven't tried this on here yet because I didn't have this to try it on. But if this is right and I've got everything right, that pin should go in there. Tight right, that one. Does it go in? Well, it's pretty bloody close. Um, Yeah, it goes in. There you go. And as John said, the center hole, the center here, should line up over the top of the hole, and it does. So that's perfect. Beautiful. Thank you very much, my friend who printed this. Now, what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of these are just bits of eight millimeter uh, linear rail, 
I've got a piece of 8mm tool steel and I'm going to grind, grind a point onto the end of it and I'm also going to make up another you know, big thing bit like this with an 8mm hole in it, ring bait mill hole so that I can sit it on top of this and make sure it's dead square and then uh, mark out a plate so for argument's sake if I get one of these out here uh, sit it on a plate like this Oh jeez, that is tight now. Oh, I'm off the wind and hole again. Um, sit it on a plate like this. Center punch this one. There's another bit of this stuff here. Center punch, center punch in there. Punch that one. And then clamp it down. And then just go around and put, put the punch in each of these holes. And punch it. And then just take it over the drill press and uh, drill the mount, including this one. And then I can use this one to mount it onto the rotary table. And uh, round it off to do what I need to do. But I have to round the outside off. And also round it off in here 70 millimeters from the center here out that way but anyway that's about all i have time for today till tomorrow Alrighty, so i just machine that up with a pretty neat fit on there ground that to a point this morning so we'll get in and mark these up i'm hoping that's the piece of uh, tool steel <laughs> i'm not 100 percent certain but we'll hit it with a brass end Yeah, mark it all right. Did it flatten the end off? No, so it's probably the tool steel. Yeah, no, that's a piece of tool steel. Didn't round the end off. So I'll go over to the, uh, I actually might just give them another hit with a proper punch. And we'll go and drill them out in the drill press. I just thought I'd show you what sort of a uh, strange uh, hole this weird grind on this drill bit makes. Here's a still image of it. Alrighty, so that's uh, pretty much the vernier side of things done. I had a bit of a bloody issue with this thing uh, when I first put it on here. I ran it around. I got around to this side here and uh, it was really getting closer to the hole that it was here. So I went off and I checked this bloody thing and across there and across there were not the same. And they should have been. In fact, across anywhere here was not the same. Between there and there and there and there was about a half a millimetres difference. So in the end I had to drill, uh, plug the hole in here, weld it up and re-drill the damn thing. And I still haven't got it right. And now it's closer to here than it is to there, which is the opposite way around to what it was. But anyway, I'll get around that. Anyway, so that I'll just cut off across here with the uh, angle grinder. And I think I'll get that done this afternoon because tomorrow is no noise Sunday. And I don't want the wife going off a brain about it. Alrighty, excuse my messy bench. Well, that's come out pretty good. Uh, pins fit in there, okay. Actually, one's just a little bit tight, but anyway. Uh, this bit here where John was saying that hole needed to be right in between here looks pretty bloody close to me. So there'll be a line marked up on here as, uh, as zero uh, for these holes here. Um, this seems to have worked out pretty good for there. Not perfect, but it'll be okay, I think. Uh, John welded a plate onto here so he could bolt that to the plate. But he had some aluminium covers on the end here, which he had to clear. And he wanted to make his multi-purpose, and I couldn't give a rat, so I, you know, I'm not making this twice. Uh, so I'm just going to weld this on. I think I'll just weld it across each end underneath. And maybe three places, like there, here and here, and that'll do it. Put, a, uh, put a something in between these two when I weld it on, so there's a little bit of clearance in there. I went down to the bolt shop this morning to get uh, some little M3 countersunk screws to put these uh, Teflon bits in here so I could bolt them in and put this bit back in the lathe and, and bore them out. Uh, but they were closed. Yeah, Chinese New Year here and uh, must, this must be the only country in the bloody world where they have three New Years. They have calendar New Year, Chinese New Year, Thai New Year, three of them. Well, within about three months of each other, three, four months, ridiculous. And they take it, they take all of them pretty seriously. So anyway, it's uh, no noise Sunday tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll be able to get in too much. Uh, I still got to uh, hack this piece down. I, I did have a smaller piece somewhere. I might be bugger if I can find it, but I need to cut a bit out of that out of here to uh, to make the piece that sits on here that that sits on top of. 
and then I want to machine uh, a scallop in the top of it for this to sit into but whether I do that tomorrow or not, or not I don't know it might be too noisy anyway we'll see she mightn't be home if she's not home I get away with things Alrighty, took the opportunity of No Noise Sunday to do a bit of pre-casting prep yesterday as uh, if you didn't see the community post to put up. I actually cast this thing and two other things for the next project uh, this morning. So I've done a bit of uh, pre-machining on this to get it to a point uh, where it won't take too bloody long to video it. And when I finish doing what I want to do on here, I'm going to go and put it in the lathe and finish it off. This will be uh, for the handle to turn everything Alrighty, I just want to work something out for in here, I'll come back to you. That's not 100% what I was aiming for, shoot for, but uh, ooh, that's not good at all. So I'll fix it up on the on the belt sander. It's a little bit too much mucking around. Alrighty, so I'm going to put that in the lathe and uh, do with the rest of what I want to do to it. Alrighty, got a heap of pitting in there. I'm not going to try and improve that any more than it is. Because on this face you can't see it anyway. See if I can track down some uh, car putty and uh, bog those holes up with that. Alrighty, get that out of there and swap jaws. Well, I'm not going to be able to do what I want to do with uh, this setup here. I'm going to have to go back to the other jaws, but I'll face this off and then I'll put the other jaws back on. I want to. Uh, machine this back out here so this is only about 10 millimeters thick here bugger Alrighty, I've just undercut that a bit so I can get a small sheep around this outside edge. I can get a bloody tool in there to do it. I ain't gonna, oh, probably can't get that over far enough. Oh yeah, yes I can. And that looks much more civilised, doesn't it? Alrighty, well. The worms are grumbling in my belly, so it must be lunchtime. So I'm going to go and have some lunch. When we come back, I'll swap these damn jaws over again and just hold it out in the last 10 millimeters or so here so I can machine all of this back. So this is only about 10 mil thick. Alrighty, so the worms are happy, so we can get on with doing this. Uh, just been down the road and grabbed uh, those screws. I need to put those uh, bits of Teflon in place with. They didn't have any M3, they only got M4s and smalls we've got. This is pretty bad, this, isn't it? Not good at all. I stopped at two little uh, automotive spare parts places while I was down that way and neither of them sell bogs. So I don't know where I'll get it from. Maybe one of the big hardware stores. But anyway, so I've marked this 10 mil in from here and I'll use a couple of parallels to uh, set this up against. Space it out.
set everything back on, turn it all off at lunchtime. No, no, that's my zero, so I don't run into the jaws. I not only want to machine this down, I've got to bore the center out now as well. It's close to my line. Don't like the look of that at all. Guess who engaged the cross slide feed instead of the Z feed? <laughs> what an idiot. Anyway, shit up they. These are horrible those those things are just well they don't really matter. Anyway. We'll get in and bore it out. Alrighty, so that's that. I have a vague recollection that John said he spent way too much time on his handle. But I think I've beaten him on the way too much time on the handle department. Alrighty, so uh, what I want to do to this now is I've got to drill a hole up in here to uh, give me access to uh, the locking screw that's in the centre hub of the, of the disc and I want to uh, drill three holes in here so I can bolt it to the disc so it's more fixed and I've got to finish dressing this up here. At this point in the video I'd like to thank my patrons for the continued support, it's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron there's a link down in the description, you can sign up down there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron there's always buy me a coffee and there's a QR code on the screen there you can scan that or there's always that thanks button down there. Alrighty, so we're getting there. Uh, this thing dressed up pretty well on the uh, belt sander. I've got a, I found another problem in the setup of this. Uh, when I was trying to explain to my mate about the importance of this this line here being dead between four and five, he didn't seem to be grasping that. And the original one he made for me had an extra hole, and I said, and was over this side, I said, get rid of it. So it actually had, what was that, uh, 10, 11 holes in it. I said, well, it doesn't need to get rid of it. And I asked him to get rid of the one on this side. Uh, at the moment... There's an extra hole still on this side and no hole over on this side. And if you turn it around the other way, that line there does not line up dead centre with the hole in the back. It's off the one side, but around this way it's OK. So unlike John's, it won't end up with that extra hole here. We've got an extra hole around here. But I don't really want it to stay there, so I think uh, once I've welded this on here, got it all in place, I'll cut that off. Cut, just cut it straight down through here and get rid of it. I think that's the way. Otherwise, that's just going to going to mess everything up but outside of that things are going along nicely like I said I've got the uh, screws to I can fix those Teflon thrust washers into here in the back now and bore them out to the right size uh, I've still got bloody heaps to do yet um, I managed to cut this piece down yesterday so it still needs to be machined um, 
I also need to machine a slot in here. Uh, I need to drill and tap a hole up in here and make a thumb screw lock for it. Uh, well, it all together, paint it. I mean, it's still a fair bit of work to do. Um, I've still got to, uh, to drill that. Oh, let's pull this apart, you can see it. Um, yeah, I hope you can see it. There's a hole up in there, right? And this is in the wrong place. That needs to be turned nearly, nearly 180 degrees. So I need to drill a hole in here, or opposite that, to access that screw there. So I uh, need to do that. And like I said, I want to drill three, put three uh, bolts in here to attach that to here. Uh, so that's another job I need to do. Still heaps to do. Uh, I've just been in doing some editing and all that work I just did on the lathe and the mill unedited it blew this video out to 45 minutes but I'm still well out of over 20 so as much as I don't want to and I didn't want to I'm going to have to go to a third uh, part for this so we'll call this a wrap I hope you're getting something out of this and you're enjoying it if you did make sure you give it a great big thumbs up smash that like button and I'll see you all next week for part 3 bye bye